there were so many notifications from this video, likes, comments, posts, that my phone was like unable to handle the flow of traffic and I like, couldn't get into the app. And then when I finally did, there was like 5 million views on this video, you know, in, in a matter of a few hours. And wow. I, personally, I really like strange, dark, and mysterious content. I find myself going on YouTube and, and being drawn to kind of like spooky, mysterious, true crime mysteries. That's the stuff that I like. I, I personally... That's the stuff I consume. And I remember I had that document. I, Dyatlov Pass is a very famous story about these hikers that go missing in the 1950s. They were hiking into the Ural Mountains um, to take this thing called their level three hiking test, which sounds really lame, but it's actually like the highest level of mountaineering in Russia at the time. And so these nine hikers were the best at mountaineering by far. They're like celebrities in mountaineering. And if they pass this test and become level three, it's, it's a really big deal. But critically, these are people that are, are masters at being out on the mountain. They know what they're doing. And they go out on this trip, and this is the 1950s, so there's no cell phones or anything. They just had these, these checkpoints they would have to hit where there'd be campsites set up and a team waiting for them. And if they hit these campsites on time, it meant they covered the distance they were supposed to, and they'd get a check or whatever. You know, you're progressing ex exactly as you should. And they, I think they hit their first checkpoint, and then they did not hit their next checkpoint at the designated time. And then there's a whole protocol that gets spun up of sending a team out to go find them to make sure they're okay. And so the team that gets spun up, they end up tracing between the, the checkpoint they hit and the one they missed. They go all the way right to like the middle and they find the campsite of these hikers. And it's up on this windswept mountainside that's all snow. And it's just a couple of small canvas tents and there's no one in them. Uh, they've been cut open, but it looks like they've been cut open from the inside by a knife. And then inside the tents were stacks of some of their clothing neatly folded and placed all around the tent. There were a couple of shoes still in there. So the, you know, one shoe is gone, one shoe's here. And then from the tent, and there's pictures of this too, you can Google Dyatlov Pass pictures, there was a trail of footprints from these tents that went down the snowy mountain to this little crops of trees. And at the trees, there were these, I think, I forget how many, like two or three of these missing hikers that were deceased. They were nude or close to nude. And there were all these scratch marks on this, this tree that looked like an animal had been clawing at it. And I think one of them had actually gotten into a tree and passed away up there. And they'd all died of exposure ultimately. Um, but that was only like three of the, the missing hikers. And they followed the, the trail, the the footmarks that went maybe a mile away to this snow cave that was not too far off. And inside was the rest of the hikers and they were also all deceased. And some of them were missing parts of their face, but it looked like they'd been surgically removed, like the nose, the mouth, the lips, that kind of thing. Oh a lot gosh. of them had exchanged clothing. So the women were wearing men's clothes and vice versa. Um, some were wearing one shoe or none. And also they were there were trace levels of radiation on, on, on them or their clothing, but there's radiation in the cave. Also, at the same time this happened, the, uh, the Russian military was doing an exercise roughly in the area that these hikers were. Neither knew the other was there. It just it happened to be the same time frame. And one of their senior leaders in the military uh, did a report on this particular night where his unit had spotted all these lights in the sky hovering over the area where these hikers had all been found. He doesn't know about the hikers, and he's never made a report like this ever in his career. Like, this is a unique report. And he wanted to know if there was another military potentially doing an exercise in that area, because whatever they're doing, it's it's not us. Like, it's somebody else is over there. Um, and so that was routed up through the chain. And when they checked, they're like, oh, shoot. Like, that was the same time as these missing hikers. Like, what's going on here? The Russian government launches this investigation into Dyatlov, and they're, they have this, this famous conclusion that's so lame, but only adds more mystery. And I'm, I'm probably going to say it wrong, but it's the hikers, their conclusion was the hikers died from some unknown, unnatural cause. End. Closed case. That's it. That's it. And so all it did is it just created rampant speculation that something paranormal happened here or, you know, whatever it was. And so I always thought that story was fascinating, mostly because the pictures associated with it are very creepy. They're pictures of the people and the campsite and the tree. And it's just this long standing 
I mean, technically it's solved, uh, but it was unsolved mystery. Uh, and I, I, I posted about the Diat Love Pass finally on TikTok after all my other ideas had been exhausted. And the only reason I didn't do this one is it just felt like such a random departure from traditional, like trendy types of content, like humor and sketch comedy and this and that, or my military stuff that I had stopped doing. This just felt so random that I wondered if people would ridicule me for being a grown man telling a ghost story basically on a kid's platform. I was like, you know what? What do I have to lose? I'm probably going to stop doing content soon anyways because nothing's working. And we were at this water park in Pennsylvania, my wife, me, my kids. And this is an indoor water park. And I decide to make this Dyatlov Pass TikTok. And so I'm in our little hotel room and I threw together this crappy little video just practically off the cuff about Dyatlov Pass. And I post it. But because we're going to be in the water park where it's going to be wet, I just left my phone in the room, something I never do. But Went to the water park and you know several hours later we came back and I look at my phone and it it actually wasn't I couldn't get it to open it was like not working and I plug it in let's see if it was working finally turned it on and I had notifications enabled on TikTok which I don't now but at the time I did and there were so many notifications from this video likes comments posts that my phone was like unable to handle the flow of traffic and I like, couldn't get into the app and then when I finally did there was like five million views on this video. You know, in a matter of a few hours, and wow. I, and you know, for for reference, before this point, I had never had a video surpass even you know ten or twenty twenty thousand views, maybe a hundred thousand views, but it would have been over years of time. So I've never gone viral, and now this is like the most viral you're going to go. And even though I didn't know what it would become, I felt like I found something that could work on the internet that is not military related that I love to do. I love strange, dark, mysterious, and I love storytelling. And I was like, I'm going to make as many of these stories on TikTok as I can and see what happens. And ultimately what happened is the account blew up and it became, you know, a pretty big account on TikTok when everybody's in, in the pandemic and glued to their phones. I'm like the token adult storyteller on the kids app. So I stood out quite a bit. Um, and then I transitioned to YouTube around like mid 2020, just because it was a more monetizable platform. And it just took off. I mean, it was the same storytelling, but instead of 60 seconds, I just told stories that were 20 minutes long. And, you know, I just it became the whole Mr. Ballin thing. And I can't believe that's what I do now. It's, uh, you know, it definitely goes to show you do what you love, you know. Very true. Do what you love and it will work. But, you, you know, it takes a little work to find what you love. But, yeah, I remember we had that conversation. Some It fell off. Then... I can't remember why I looked you up or somebody told me about something happened and I pulled up your, your YouTube. I think it was YouTube. And I was like, holy sh! like this guy just started this. Like <laughs> I like, couldn't believe it. Like he wanted to come on the show. Now he's got two or 3 million <laughs> subs. I've been doing this for a couple of years. I was like, Whoa, that's incredible. And then so many things have been born out of, out of your TikTok account, yeah. the YouTube you're on tours. You got a book coming out from what I understand. You have a foundation. Yep. You have Ball and Studios. I do have a question. Yeah. Your name's John Allen. Yeah. How did Mr. Ballin come in? So uh, I originally started an account on TikTok under the username John B. Allen 416. That was just the random username I had but I didn't have any punctuation in it. And so it looked like J-O-H-N-B-A-L-L-E-N, -L -L -E all kind of mashed together. And if you just glance at it, it looks like John Ballin. It doesn't, you wouldn't think, oh, that's John B. Allen, unless you knew me. You'd think that's John Ballin 416. That's who this person is. And that's important because when I was doing my I'm Mr. Navy SEAL stuff and getting a lot of hate, I, at the same time, kind of ironically, was getting all these young bucks that are trying to be SEALs, like I was back in the day, who were so desperate to talk to SEALs and to get to get answers to questions and learn about BUDS that I was getting so many incoming messages from aspiring wannabe Navy SEALs that were very respectful. This is the opposite of hate. This is like, you're my idol. I want to be like you. And so they'd be very respectful in their Instagram DMs. They'd say, excuse me, Mr. Ballin, uh, I have a question about the Navy SEAL training. Can you answer? <laughs> and I got so many messages and I, and I stopped correcting them. I'm like, my name's actually John Allen. And I was like, okay. So I just became Mr. Ballin. And then I actually very briefly got shadow banned early on in TikTok. I believe I was shadow banned, which means you're posting, but for some reason, it gets like zero views and there's no real reason for it. 
And it was going on for like a couple of weeks where I'd post and get one view or two views when I was used to getting a thousand or two thousand on this this first account. And I was like, all right, I'll just make a new account. Clearly there's something wrong with it. And the first name that popped in my head was Mr. Ballin. Interesting. Interesting. So what what do you got coming out now? So we have a graphic novel, our first uh, official Mr. Ballin publication, which is unreal. It is unreal. We have the the best in business uh, illustrator and uh, the comic book uh, writer who helps package the stories together. But it's a collection of just in some new, some old stories. And that's coming out October 1st of this year. And it's an absolute passion project. It's going to be awesome. It's the Strange, Dark, and Mysterious delivered in book format for the first time. So there's that. Um, there's also, uh, so we did a live event. Our, well, we've done a couple of digital live events, but we did an actual in-person, you know, comparable to stand-up comedy, but stand-up storytelling. Last October um, in Austin, Texas, I did a, a, just a one-night show at the, the Paramount Theater in Austin. Um, and that was awesome, you know, doing you know, five stories on stage. I was so scared, but I've always wanted to do live something. Um, and so that was great. And so we're thinking about, you know, maybe doing some more live live events for sure. So stay tuned for live events. Um, and then, yeah, we have, gosh, we have the Ballin Studios, which is kind of like the umbrella over everything. And uh, within that, we have, you know, Mr. Ballin Foundation, and we've given over a million dollars to victims of violent crime and their families. And that's got its own team. And basically proceeds from Mr. Ballin fund the organization and allow people to donate and 100% of their donations go out the door. Like there's no overhead. If you donate five bucks, five bucks goes out the door to victims of violent crime and their families. Um, just because we feel really strongly that, you know, we are profiting off of other people's tragedies. There's no two ways about it. And so we have to give back literally to the people that we're making money on. And frankly, it's been kind of wonderful to to meet these people that- You get to meet them? Yeah, yeah, indirectly, because we have an amazing, I do meet some of them, not all of them, but I definitely meet some of them and it's it's crazy. No matter where you're watching Sean Ryan show from, if you get anything out of this, please like, comment, subscribe, and most importantly, share this everywhere you possibly can. And if you're feeling extra generous, Please leave us a review on Apple and Spotify podcasts.